Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of TD101. Episodes 7, 8 and 9 will be closely linked as they have to do with dividing a line in a number of parts. Episode 7 will look specifically at dividing a line in two equal parts. This is also known as bisecting a line. Stay tuned. Okay, today we are going to bisect a line of measurement 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters. Now, before we can bisect that line, we have to firstly draw that line. Now, in drawing any line, the first thing we do is to draw a construction line of any length. Now, this must be estimated to be longer than the length of line that you want to draw. So, for example, I'm going to draw a 10 centimeter line or a 100 millimeter line. This construction line must be longer. So now that I've drawn that construction line, I'm going to go ahead to indicate the starting point on this line. I'm going to call this point A. Right. So after I've indicated that point and label it A, I'm going to go ahead, take my set square. Now this can be any set square and put the zero mark in line with point A as demonstrated here. I'm going to now go ahead and find a hundred millimeters or 10 centimeters on the ruler. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 100 millimeters. Right at that mark, I'm going to put another point. This point will be called point B. I'm going to label it as such. The next step, for the next step rather, I'm going to connect point A to point B using an outline. Like this. Now I have my line and in technical drawing, we name lines according to the starting point and the ending point of the line. So this line can now be called line AB. And this particular line measures 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters. Now, we can go ahead and bisect this line. Now, in bisecting this line, we will need our compass. Now, any compass can be used for this exercise, but I am recommending the compass that is referred to as the bow compass. You can go ahead on Google and find out the compass that goes by that name. Alternatively, the compass that is found in your geometry set can also be used. It is a more economic option. Now, in using this compass, there are a few things that you have to note. Firstly, you have to ensure that the pencil that you are using with this compass is short, as a longer pencil can impede your workflow. So here's the compass. I'm going to now put the pencil in the compass. Another thing that you have to ensure is as you are inserting the pencil, you have to ensure that the pencil point is in line with the compass point, meaning 
it cannot be like this or like this. This will produce inaccuracies in your work. After you have ensured that the points are in line, you can go ahead and close your compass. In closing your compass, you may notice that at some points, it is not locking as tightly as it could. You can turn the pencil, this is a trial, trial and error exercise, turn the pencil until you have found the point that it is most secure. Then you go ahead and you tighten the pencil in the compass. Okay. Going forward now, you're going to open your compass to a convenient radius. And by radius, I mean the distance between the pencil point and the compass point. Now, all circles or all arcs have a radius, which will be determined by the distance between the pencil point and the compass point. Now, you're going to open your compass to a length that is equivalent to more than half the length of the line. Now, this will go by estimation. For example, if you open it at this distance, you will realize that you, by just looking at it, it is less than half the length of the line. If you open it a bit further, you will realize that it is longer than the line. So, you can adjust until it is safe to assume that it is more than half the length, like what you are seeing here at the moment. Now, once you have gotten it to this convenient length, you are going to place the compass point at any of the starting points. I'm going to start with point A. You can start with point B if you wish. I am going to go ahead and swing an arc Hopefully you can see that arc. This is to be done using construction lines. However, for the sake of this video, I'm going to make this line a bit brighter so that you can see it. But it should be done using construction lines. Now that I've gotten this arc from point A, I'm going to do the same at point B, ensuring not to shift the compass. So I'm placing it at point B, the compass point that is. Without shifting the compass, I'm going to swing another arc. Now it must be ensured that the arcs intersect at the top of the line and at the bottom of the line. Once you have those intersections, you will now get two more points. You can just brighten them if you wish. Now, once you get those points, you are going to take your set square. Now, this can be done using any of these set squares. My preference is the 30, 60 degree set square. You are going to ensure that your T square is sliding along the edge of the drawing table. And you're going to ensure that the set square is sliding along the T-square. You're going to slide it until it is in line with the points that were created. Then you are going to use a construction line to connect the point or to pass through the points rather. When you have this, you have successfully bisected your line. And it should be in two equal parts. I'm going to test this. Remember, before the line was 100 millimeters. Now, this bisector line, this construction line, is a bisector line because it's bisecting the line in two equal parts. I'm going to check. If you notice, at the 5 centimeter mark on my set square, you realize that it, it is perfectly in line with this bisector line. So there you have it, people. We have successfully bisected a line in two equal parts. Please like this video, share this video, 
and subscribe to the page for more videos of TD 101. Have a good day.